Welcome back to the Eye at the Potato Expo. We're live here in Orlando. We're talking about all things potatoes. And everybody, or hopefully everybody knows, how rich in potassium potatoes are. But there's another use of potassium, and with me is Tommy Roach from Nature's Alpine Solutions to tell me about that. Tommy, welcome. Thank you. So what else can I use potassium for besides in my body after exercising and getting that great potassium from potatoes? So plants, of course, need potassium just like they need nitrogen, they need phosphate. And what people don't realize is that a lot of plants, potatoes being one of them, take up more potassium than they do nitrogen. And is that why they're so rich in potassium? That's one of the factors, yes. Okay, so you're inputting more potassium in to keep the plant healthy, or, or what are you actually doing with the potassium? So with, with our research over the past three years, uh, it's, it's about adding a soluble available source of potassium, because if you look at, uh, there, potassium is a naturally occurring element in the soil. Right. And research that's been done over you know, a 50 year time frame has concluded that if you have a set amount of potassium in the soil that you don't need to add any additional potassium. But what they fail to realize is that with genetics, whether you're talking corn hybrids today, soybean varieties, or potato varieties, yields are going up, which means more potassium is being removed from the ground. And so producers, in order to drive yield, a lot of producers will only add nitrogen to achieve that and neglecting potassium, which that's the wrong thing to do because in increased nitrogen will antagonize the uptake of potassium. Okay, so again, you know, an analogy would be if you want to retain more calcium in your body, you take vitamin D. That's why they're Correct. adding vitamin D in milk. So it's the same kind of process. So potassium has a lot of different effects, not only on how the plant operates, but how a tuber stores and how a tuber fries. So if you have a potato tuber that has increased potassium content, it will fry better than a tuber that does not. And we don't want any you know, dark chips or, right, or right. black french fries. And we've all gotten those and That's we That's correct, and you, we bite them, aside. you bite them and you throw them out. Right, right. So, um, and, and again, not being a farmer, not being a, uh, a biochemist, I guess the question that I have to ask is, this seems a lot like common sense. So if anybody's growing tubers for frying, why aren't you doing this? Well, and, and if you look at the three primary nutrients that are required to grow a plant, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, there's, so nitrogen you only have basically four sources that you can use as a fertilizer. And we're not talking organic right, ingredients. Right, right. So traditional uh, inorganic fertilizer. You only have two sources of phosphate you can use. But potassium, there's there's a list a mile long of different sources that you can use as a potassium fertilizer. And they all vary in, in the availability that they have to the plant, the solubility, and the efficiency in which they can get into the plant. So the reason my talk was centered around using the right source, which is part of the 4R right. Nutrient Stewardship right. Initiative, that in order to derive yield from not only this year, but on down the line, we've got to be better stewards of what we have available to grow with. So it's all about knowing when the plant needs a nutrient and applying the right source of the nutrient at the right time, at the right place, at rate, and source. And keeping the soil healthy. Correct, because with soil provides the foundation for which Everything. We build houses right. on, we grow crops on, we feed the world. And if we get rid of all, you know, the, the bacteria, we get rid of all the life, if you would, out of the soil, you're not going to be able to grow That's anything. correct. Okay. And, and if you look at, so we want to talk about soils. If we look at soil structure today versus how it was 50 years ago, the health of that soil is declining just as is sure. potassium content. 
So uh, talk to me for a second about climate change, and we've talked a lot about that um, both yesterday and today. Um, with the climate change and the effect on soil health, is there an effect on potassium as well? There is not only a, an, a there's, there's a general effect on plant health in general. And potassium as a nutrient keeps the plant running. People think nitrogen does, but really potassium keeps that plant running in the environment of elevated temperatures that, that we see today. Mm -hmm. So if, if we're able to keep the plant running by having a plant that has adequate nutrition, adequate potassium nutrition, then it's going to be able to grow better, produce more yield, produce a more nutritious, better frying quality potato. And are you seeing here at the Potato Expo uh, from your lecture that you know, a lot of the growers understand that and get it, or do they have questions about it? There are, there's a movement toward um, education on both plant health and soil health. Uh, I think people are finally realizing that just throwing more fertilizer on the crop. Insecticides, to, pesticides, whatever. Everything in right. general, putting more of something isn't necessarily the right thing to do. It's using, going back to the four R's, mm -hmm. it's using the, the right source at the right rate, at the right time, at the right place, because we want to keep all of those applied, you know, insecticides, herbicides, nutrients on target so as not to contaminate uh, watersheds because every year we hear about, you know, the, the algae bloom in, in Lake right. Erie and what that does. So. so it's really taking, going back to, to farming the way it used to be probably 100 years ago, a much more holistic approach to it rather than just, you know, I'm going to take this, whatever this is, and pour it on it, and that's going to fix the problem. So, somewhat, yeah. you know, we, I know this is potato show, but there is, there's a corn farmer, every year there's, they have yield contests for the Commodity Classic, and this year was yet another record corn yield of 500 and some odd bushels. And how he got that, and it's no different than a potato farmer, it's knowing what to use, when to use it, how much to use, and, and why are you doing what you do. Right. It's all about being more efficient at what you do. And the good news is that potassium is one of those efficient tools. Tommy, thanks so much. Now I, I have two reasons to love potassium. Uh, that's Appreciate right. it. You bet. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more right here on The Eye.